Alrighty, let's start with the gaming news segment for tonight with Mole in the Morning and your gaming news. And I would say we, we are just starting right on with the banger, right? Let's start with the biggest news of this month, year? I don't even know how to put this, but if you have not been on the internet yesterday, which, well, why would you? It's Sunday. Um... We had leaks of GTA 6. Just to make something very clear here, I will not show any screenshots. I will not show any videos. Even though I have the videos here, I downloaded them, but I will not showcase them because Take Two is out for blood and they are just copyright striking everyone right now who is even just remotely showing a frame of those leaks so yeah no thank you i will <laughs> i will not show you anything here because i want to keep my channel yeah but the reality is that gta 6 has been leaked and not just one of those funny little you know like blurry screenshots or an artwork or the title drop or some, you know how some people are like showing this weird phone clips which are 10 seconds long, which they're recording from their monitor. No, we are talking about high quality videos. 90 videos in total. 90. And they have all been 4K high quality from directly the game. Uh, it was a pretty early build. And, well, apparently a lot of people don't know what in development means. But it was basically like from a debug mode. And, yeah, it showed it showed a lot. And apparently it was a hacker who got access to the slag of Rockstar. And he just not didn't get a lot of videos out of it. He literally was able to steal the source code for GTA 5 and GTA 6. So that's what happened. Um, now, of course, you have to ask the question, why the hell is the source code of GTA 6 in your Slack? I get it, you can upload stuff to Slack, but really, you are uploading your source code to Slack? That's ballsy. And it will bite you in the ass. Um, but the hacker also is now trying to sell the source code. And he's also reaching, apparently out in panic, to uh, take two in Rockstar. And is trying to strike a deal. Whatever that means. Probably begging them not to sue his ass into oblivion. Um, but <laughs> that will not happen. The damage is done. Like, I can I can only imagine that whoever did this was very young. Probably early 20s, maybe not even 20, and managed to, like, do some phishing with one of the workers, got the password, got the login, did steal all the stuff, and thought he would now be the hero of the gaming industry. Where in reality, he probably just opened up the lawsuit of his life, which will shred him to pieces. Like, I can guarantee you one thing. Take two will make sure that this person will never see a plus on his bank account ever again. So, worst decision that person could ever make. And, hey Gaffer, hey Lemons, by the way, welcome in folks, welcome in. Welcome in. And quick note to Lemons, you are banned now because of my Saints Lost and Buccaneers 1. Just saying. Um, but yeah, to go back to the topic, um, this is just... Like, this is the biggest hack leak we have ever seen in gaming. 
I know that some people celebrate this, and some people are like, yeah, this is what you get. This is what you get for letting us wait so long for GTA 6. You deserve this. And to those people, I can only say, F you. Like, seriously, no, they do not deserve this. They were carefully crafting their next big game. They were taking their time and they wanted to make it exceptional. And that now all got ruined. They got all ruined. The build up, the marketing, and that the source code is now out there in the wild. Do you even imagine what that means? This is not a, a small thing. A source code means that people now have access into the innards of GTA 6 for a game which will have tons of online capabilities. This is the absolute super gal. And you don't want that. And you know what this probably means? For all the people who are celebrating this, this probably means that GTA 6 will not come out for a while. They will not announce it. Uh, we heard rumors that they might have been the first announcement or would have been the first announcement at the Game Awards at the end of the year. And then we would see more of the game throughout next year till it then would release by the end of next year. That's that's the rumors we heard. You can all scratch this now. It will not happen. It will now take... They, they could now decide to completely cancel the game and start from scratch. They could do this. And you know what? It happened in the past. There have been other projects who had their source code just partially leaked and they were like, and we out. We are doing this again. Cool. Like, this is bad. The source code gives you ultimately access to a lot of developers' tools which they cannot have happen and leaving it in the wild. They can't. Especially for a game which will be a live service, which will have GTA Online 2 or whatever they're calling it, and they're planning on making money from it for years to come. If there's only remotely the chance that because of the source code, which is now in the wild, that hackers will have it easier to generate like money in that game, or will generate some content which could get to their bottom line of money they're making, they will not let that happen. Again, they will postpone the game. So, this was the worst leak which ever could happen. Now, I saw some takes where people said, yeah, but it's the gamer's fault. Like they were sharing like the screenshots and videos. Here's the thing. You cannot really put them at fault there. They have been starving for any small information on one of the most highly anticipated games in this decade. Not year, decade. And this is also a fault of the companies that they have basically trained their fans to be in this perpetual continuity of hype, hype, hype. Like everything is built around a hype machine and you keep those people in suspension and keep the hype growing. And those people are ravenous. They are hungry. They want more information. Like you know how this hype cycle works nowadays. It's like there is a 50 second video of a new game where 30 seconds are logos alone. 
and then you have more cuts than in a Michael Bay movie. After that, that, mo that little trailer will be dissected by 20 million YouTubers frame by frame to build even more hype. Then this is going to social media and TikTok where people are telling you all about the one frame Easter eggs you have missed and the hype is building even more and the companies are sitting there and they are like, oh yeah, <laughs> that's good hype. Yeah, people want this game so badly. But the problem is, especially for GTA 6, <sighs> There has been this hype. People just build themselves. Like, let's be real here. Rockstar and Take Two have not built any hype around GTA 6. They didn't have to. Because basically the hype people built themselves was just running unchecked for years. And people were just ravenous for this one screenshot, for this one artwork. Dude, I know people, I wouldn't call them my friends, but you know, I know people who know people, like acquaintance, who basically were sending themselves fake trailers every other week and was like, look, I am the first who spotted the new GTA 6. I saw it first. Like this piss content of who will find the leak or screenshots or something like that first. And it's like, yeah, of course people will jump on this. They were hungry. They were just absolutely hungry for any information. And hey, Byron, how are you doing today? And you can't really blame them for that. But they like showcase those screenshots and those videos that the hacker did it and that the hacker also is now trying to sell the source code shame on that person but the people who are sharing it they have been waiting for over 10 years gta 5 is 10 years old now like <laughs> yeah but <sighs> I will be honest, I don't think that the approach of Take Two and Rockstar was the right thing to do after this broke. They stayed completely silent and then they did send out their lawyers. I think Xbox had a pretty good approach when the Xbox Series S leaked. They did a pretty good, quickly put together marketing gig to basically get the attention of the people in the right direction because they knew the information was out there, the pictures were out there and so on and so forth. And they took that and they started running with it. So I think Xbox actually controlled the narrative pretty well, right? And now Take, take Two decided to not control the narrative at all and just let this run rampant and let the lawyers figure it out, which is the right decision from a purely corporate position but from a marketing position it's suicide and you know what they should have done instead they should have probably made an announcement they probably showed like a super quick clip or they should have just grabbed some developers who are available you know it's a sunday it was in the early mornings, but they would have probably found one or two developers who could have just taken even some of those leaked footage, walked through it, 
and make it look like as so you can see here this is our first look at gta 6 we have this diner we are trying to rate and we did a lot of hard work to put in new animations and let the people react in the right way to make it more believable that you were just like trying to rob this diner or you see some of those characters who don't have faces or who are la just looking like ragdolls uh, those are of course placeholders because this is an old build but in the full game they will of course have like the real like look to them there you can see our new car animation like they could have just taken those leaked footage and spin their own narrative around it they could have completely salvaged this instead of they decided to just let it run rampant so unfortunately this is a marketing disaster on so many levels and the hacker is here completely at fault I think Take-Two and Rockstar could have reacted better to this. There were other options. They decided not to take them. And now we might face a delay. Like, it's a mess. And it really sucks. It really sucks for everyone involved, especially for the developers. Like, my heart is going out for the devs who have been working on this for the last six or eight years. And who basically now put their hard work on display in this matter. And it sucks. And for people saying, hey, play the hacker that they are not releasing the source code. Well, what you're doing with that is open yourself up to tons of hackers just thinking, oh shit, there's money to be made from take two. The moment you are doing that, hundreds and hundreds of hackers will try every day to hack something from your net code. Like they will try every day now to steal something from you because they know you will pay up your nose to get it back. <laughs> no, they cannot do that. They just can't. And also, here's the thing. A netcode can change. A netcode is not an immovable object, which if it's once out there in the wild, it cannot be changed. Now that they know that the part of the netcode is out there, they just have to go back and fix it. Again, this is probably why they will delay the game, because they now have to change the, net the code, right? And yeah, the source code. Why do I say netcode? The source code. And also keep in mind, it's digital. What makes you think the hacker doesn't have like five copies of it? hundred copies of it and has already given it to some other people. Deke, I really, I really believe by the way that you don't understand that this is not the fault of developers. There was no release day. And even if, if developers realize that if they would release the game in a shitty state, just to keep the release date. No thanks. But what do you mean not playing games with fans? Nobody has played games with fans. Rockstar hasn't played games with fans. They are not at fault here. I don't know why you are blaming the developers when they have done, done nothing wrong here. Absolutely not. Like, it's completely okay to be disappointed that the game is not coming out at the point you want it to come out. But, like, as an adult, 
<laughs> you should know that things sometimes just take time. And it's better that they take time and not being rushed. Yeah, like games are not being easily done. They are super complex. Like again, if you want to see a game which was rushed, look at Cyberpunk. <laughs> look at Battlefield. Shit, look at Anthem. Employ more people is not the it's not fixing anything. Like this is definitely something I have realized. A lot of people talking about game development and what companies should do when they have absolutely no clue about game development. And I hate to say this a bit, but you are showing that right now. Just because you are throwing 2,000 people at a problem doesn't make it go away. That's not how it works. It's an art form which needs particular craftsmanship. Just more people throwing at the problem is not fixing it quicker. You look at Ubisoft. Ubisoft actually tried that approach with having like a thousand people working at their games. And we are getting broken, mediocre pieces of shit as of recent from Ubisoft. Just more people does only one thing, cutting down development time. But it doesn't improve the quality. It doesn't improve anything good for you, the gamer. We have seen exceptional games which were done by two people, five people. I mean, let me give you an example. Stardew Valley was made by one person. One over the years. Exceptional games don't need 2,000 people working at it. Faster turnovers don't equal better games. It's as simple as that. So. Don't get me wrong that they, I'm not saying to make something clear, we, we are mixing things up right now. We are, we are mixing things up here right now. I'm not saying that the approach take two head with milking GTA online for years it's an approach I'm approving on. But again, that's not necessarily Rockstar's fault, who has been working on GTA 6. It's not like, like, here's the thing. GTA Online is taken care of by a completely different team than the team who is working on GTA 6 right now. Like, pe people have to understand that just because there's one, develop one developer here, they can be multiple teams who are working on multiple things at the same time. Rockstar has multiple teams. So the team who is taking care of GTA Online has nothing to do with GTA 6. It is a completely different team. Like, keep that in mind. The team who is mostly taking over live service activities has nothing to do with the next game in development. Like, they are most of the time very small teams in comparison who are taking over. Like, so it works. So, yeah. But I can see that there's a lot of people who have very different opinions on this. It's, it's so fascinating to see what the GTA 6 leak did. Like, I, I talked about this a few weeks and months ago when somebody was asking if I know anything about GTA 6 here in the chat. And I was like, no, I, I, know, I know nothing really about it. But the thing is, you will notice 
when the first trailer of GTA 6 will drop. You will notice it. There is no way that you can ignore it. And I mean, yesterday I saw um, somebody re-uploaded like one of the videos on Twitter. And after four or five hours, it had over seven million views. A shitty alpha video, which is only three minutes long, which shows nothing interesting so far, had over 7 million views on Twitter. Think about that. Tons of official trailers will not even get there. A leaked GTA trailer did. Like, it's... It's remarkable. It really is. And that's that's the marketing power. Um, GTA has. Like, <laughs> let me have a look here super quickly. The official The official Diablo 4 cinematic, like the announcement cinematic, like the official one, huh? It's two years old. On the official Diablo channel, has 7.6 million views. Think about that. Diablo 4 is, like, the Diablo franchise is not small, right? And after two years, they managed to get 7.6 million views on the official cinematic. <laughs> the GTA 5 leaked video of, like, a diner had over 7 million views after four hours. Like the drawing and just marketing power GTA 6 has is out of this world. And again, yes, you will notice when the official trailer drops online, the internet will explode. They will notice. All right. That was the first big gaming news. Uh, let's have some quick small gaming news. And then we have some, some bigger news again. Um, but let's move on for now. I think we have said everything there is to say regarding GTA 6. Um, and I hope we will have some more positive and upbeat news in the next foreseeable future. Yeah. All right. Uh, next news. Uh, Phil Spencer was in Japan the last week because there was the uh, Tokyo Game Show. And he also talked about Final Fantasy XIV. And he said that he still absolutely believes um that Final Fantasy XIV will come to Xbox. Um, and he said, to just quote him directly, we certainly announced that, <laughs> and he laughs, naturally, we haven't given up on it yet. This is a commitment from both Microsoft and Square Enix to gamers, and we will continue to coordinate our efforts. So, he is still... Uh... He's still trying. Still trying. I wonder how much uh, Sony has basically paid him or paid um, Square Enix there to keep it off the Xbox. Like, yeah. But they're still trying. 
they're still trying. Speaking of Sony, so this is a bit of a bummer. Um, good old PlayStation has now announced that officially PSVR games will not be compatible with PlayStation VR 2. Yep, because it's apparently a completely new system which is truly next generation virtual reality experience. And because of that, all the old old PSVR games are not compatible with the new PSVR 2 headset. Which sucks. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that developers cannot like try to port their games to PSVR 2. Right. Uh, they can they can still go back and try to port it and try to make it so that it will run on PSVR 2. But in-house wise, it is not possible. So we will <laughs> we will see if any of the old games will be ported to PSVR 2. I doubt that because they probably cost quite a bit of money. <laughs> Coming from the executives who said, we don't believe in generations. Oh no, wait, we believe in generations and then we don't believe in generations and now we believe in generations again. Yeah, that dude. Yeah, looking forward to the models when they prove them wrong. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Alrighty. Next news. Fair warning. This next news will include slightly social commentary. Uh, over the weekend, um, there was another slight scandal going around because G2 Esports was celebrating right they were celebrating their world championship in um well, they were not really celebrating their world championship. They were celebrating that they finished second place at the Summer European League of Legends Championships. And with that, they are going to the world championships for League of Legends. And so far, so good. And G2, or G2 Esports, uh, was celebrating that. And the CEO of the company... Carlos Ocelot Rodriguez, who has been a former League of Legends pro player himself. Uh, he was like the mid laner for SK Gaming years back. And then he founded his own um, esports um, team with G2. And he was recording a video. How the team celebrated. And he then was posting it on the official channels, how the team celebrated. You know, you see some team members having some uh, champagne bottles and just some uh, some fireworks going off and all that. They were celebrating. And in itself, that is completely fine. It gets a little bit problematic when people started to scan the faces of the people who were front and center in this on the celebration video. And who was showing up in that video? Yes, Andrew Datte. And if you were like, who? Andrew Datte, the guy who is now banned from every social media in existence, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, you name it, that dude is banned. And you can imagine how bad it is when even Facebook and Twitter is banning people like this. Oh yeah, also, 
interesting enough, um, the Romanian police is now looking into him for human trafficking. Isn't it great? And if you're like, okay, what did this dude do? Well, let's just say Andrew Date, um, how to put it? He thinks that women have two characteristics and that is boobs and vaginas. That's all what women are there for. And he unfortunately has been making quite a bit of money with this perspective, going to multiple podcasts, making tons of videos and just being a misogynistic asshole. Like I have seen some of his podcasts and some of his videos and the things he is saying is way beyond effed up. And now people, of course, started to call out Carlos and they were like, hey, what the hell are you doing here? Right. And instead of saying, well, this was a mistake, Carlos was doubling down in the tweet saying, nobody will ever be able to police my friendships. I draw my line here. I party with whoever the fuck I want. <sighs> Carlos. Carlos. Look, dude. I couldn't care less if you are sucking Data's dick in a private room in your mansion somewhere and you are best buddies doing so. I couldn't care less. But this was an official appointment. This was an official video for your official company. And let me tell you one thing. If there is one thing sponsors right now do not want to be associated with, even remotely close, it's Andrew Date. This has nothing to do how you think about the guy. It's just that every sponsor out there just doesn't want to be associated with that shit face. And that is exactly what you did. And the last time I checked Ocelot, you have a lot of sponsors who are financing your esports company. So you might want to think about twice. Interestingly enough, uh, the official Twitter account of G2 has then put out a statement. And we will read this statement together. But yeah, let's read this. Hey, G2 Army, last night we failed you. The actions of our CEO spoke a language in stark contrast with the values and the culture G2 lives by and strives for. And for that, we apologize. Since our creation, we have worked hard to build a safe and inclusive environment to enjoy esports. These are just small steps in the right direction we need to take as a company. We will continue to do our best each and every day to improve ourselves and the industry at large. After internal discussions, Carlos and our supervisory board have mutually agreed that he would take eight weeks off leave as CEO and suspend his earnings during that time. Thank you to the G2 Army and the eSports community for holding us accountable, G2 eSports. So the first thing I have to call out here as absolutely bullshit is the spoken language in stark contrast with the values. So because he used the word fucking it that's probably the issue they had it's not the language he chose it is that he chose andrew dante to be there on an official event that is the problem the language i couldn't care less he was using like that's his thing And after internal discussions, this is just blubbering PR speech, nobody cares. 
he would take an eight weeks of leave as CEO and suspend his earnings during that time. Boo hoo. Oh no. That man will not make money for two months. Last time I checked, he is a millionaire at this point, like a pretty big millionaire. Oh no. Oh, he is not making tens of thousands of dollars for two months. Oh, how heartbreaking. Yes. Like, what? And I'm pretty sure, even if he not will work as a CEO, he will still do stuff. He will still do things in the background. And it's like, this, this statement is as bland as it gets. And I couldn't, I couldn't care less, to be honest. Like, again, if Carlos really thinks that this is like, this is like the friends he wants to be associated with. Okay. Okay. But man... And I, I really, really hoped, I really kind of hope that he would have changed. Like I have been following Ocelot for 10 years now. I have been following this man for over 10 years because he was a very interesting character with very interesting visions. But the reality is just, he was always a little bit, I hate to say this, but he was the hot-headed Spain guy, right? Like, like you know how, how people are like, yeah, people from Spain are very hot-headed. He was definitely that person. He was always very hot-headed. He had this fire in his blood. And he was he was running his mouth before he was thinking most of the time. <laughs> and I, I I would go so far to say that he had definitely misogynistic tendencies sometimes. He he definitely had those tendencies. But you know what? I hoped that A, that would subside a little bit when he gets older. I mean, he is now 32. When he married and when he got a daughter. Right. I, I, I would have thought that after that point, he would have been a little bit less, um, have a little bit less of a problematic view. But apparently he doubled down and was like, my best buddy is Andrew Data. It's like, ugh. That's unfortunate. Like, really unfortunate. And again, like, I'm, I'm not here to police his friendships. He can have, like, as many friendships with this guy as he wants. Like, as I said, if he would suck Data's dick in a private room in his mansion, have fun. I heard Data really loves that. It's very manly. But if you were doing this in a official statement and you were doing this on your official accounts to showcase that shit face, then yeah, that is an official thing. And now, of course... <laughs> Carlos being freaking Carlos, showing that he totally, totally didn't understand what this is about. He now has uh, changed his Twitter header and his Twitter profile, and it's now showing a stupid phoenix rising. And it's like, dude, <sighs> symbolism much? <laughs> I can't, I can't, just can't, I just, I just can't, like, 
yeah yeah just i i can't speaking of influencers if we are um, on this topic apparently multiple mega influencers pokimane miskiff um and many more um, of the Twitch streamers basically now came together to decide that they are taking a stand against gambling. Uh, there was a pretty big gambling scandal where a big Twitch streamer was basically asking for money to fuel his gambling addiction and they were giving him over three hundred thousand dollars in just two months and basically the gambling addiction has been ruining a lot of lives and twitch has directly fueling it especially to a lot of people who are not even 18 years old so now a lot of twitch streamers are speaking out about it and they are basically saying hey twitch if you don't stop the gambling on your website, we would take measures around Christmas. So what does that mean? Uh, this is the time where advertisement is crazy high. Like winter slash Christmas time is where advertisers are going absolutely ham. Right? And where are all those websites, YouTube, Twitch, they're making most of their money and the content creators are making most of their money. And so what will happen if, let's say, like the hundred biggest Twitch streamers would all not stream in that time, Twitch would lose millions and maybe even billions of dollars. So this is apparently now how they are trying to force Twitch's hand to do something about it. Now, of course, keep in mind, uh, this is a very good point to make. It's kind of interesting that those people never reacted to any other thing happening on Twitch and that they are now reacting to gambling. And the answer is, yeah, they have to. Because the moment the authorities start to realize what is going on on Twitch, fun time is over like worst case scenario they're closing down twitch faster than you can say amazon prime like when it comes to gambling there's only a few things in a lot of states not just in the us but in a lot of states around the world where things become very unfriendly very quickly so yeah as a content creator, I would be very cautious about that. I would be afraid of it. Because again, the moment the authorities jump onto this and decide that they screwed this up royally, they're closing down the platform and they are not caring. They're not asking twice. So yes, if, if people are asking why are content creators are now like acting on it, there's the answer. It's like it's in their best interest to do something against it. All right, folks, technically. We are done with the news. Technically. Practically. This is just in. We have to go back to GTA 6. Because Rockstar has released an official message regarding what is going on. And I would say we are reading that together. And then it seems like we have to talk about GTA 6 again. Yay! <laughs> so let's read the message. A message from Rockstar Games. 
We recently suffered a network intrusion in which an unauthorized third party illegally accessed and downloaded confidential information from our systems, including early development footage for the next Grand Theft Auto. At this time, we do not anticipate any disruption to our live game services, nor any long-term effect on the development of our ongoing projects. We are extremely disappointed to have any details of our next games shared with you all in this way. Our work on the next Grand Theft Auto game will continue as planned and we remain as committed as ever to delivering an experience to you, our players, that truly exceeds your expectations. We will update everyone again soon and of course, we'll probably introduce you to the next game when it is ready. We want to thank you everyone for their ongoing support through this situation, the Rockstar Games team. That sucks. Again, I think I have said everything I wanted to say really on this topic. Um, I, like again, I think they could have managed this better. I know yesterday was not business hours for them and all that, but yeah, at least they now, they did speak out about, about this. I was actually wondering if they would say anything at all. Because for a while it looked like they wouldn't. And again, this is this is pretty sparse, to say the least. Um, but it also seems like they will not postpone anything planned. So that's interesting. Now... We don't really know if that is true because there was never a release window, not even release date, but not even a release window to begin with. Um, yeah. Well, hey, at least they talked about this. So I wish them the very best and I, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 tough. It's tough. But I think that's it with the gaming news and we will be back for that tomorrow at 8 a.m. ET here on my YouTube channel live if you want to watch it. Uh, if you have now watched this as a thought so to speak on YouTube, uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed my gaming news commentary, you might want to consider to subscribe. But yeah, thank you very much for watching there. And for the rest, we have to watch some guns and some highlight reel.